and welcome to the Popcorn Junkies. Do you like my Asteroid City hat? I do actually. It's really it's nice, nice, isn't it? Cool. Yeah, Wes Anderson film. Anyway, it's cool. actually my favourite one. Very in cool. Days. Very nice. Uh, we are reviewing me and my dear, dear wife. If you're listening on podcast, you're about to hear the voice of my dear wife, Nadia. Hello. Uh, we're reviewing a film called Wicked Little Letters. Um, we did a reaction to the trailer of this. Expletive, swearing, difficult women and the joy of being a difficult woman and all that kind of stuff. But also the difficulties of being a difficult woman at a difficult time. Um, and it's based on a true story. So this is a film that stars Olivia Colman and Jesse Buckley, really. They're the two sort of lead actors. But with some really sterling support from uh, Timothy Spall and a young actress, sensational young actress, Anjana Vassan. And is, that, is, is, this her first, is this her big break? This is kind of a big, the first major mm. part. Yeah, she's been in a, in a show on Channel 4. I think she won an Olivia Award for a stage show. <clears throat> um, she has the most extraordinary eyes. Literally, you can fall mean, into them. Unbelievable. Drop into the eyes. Mm. Um, this is based on a true story uh, of the uh, Little Hampton Letters that happened in the 1920s, the seaside town, um, in which outrageously rude letters suddenly seem to be being sent uh, to uh, a particular woman um, and particular women and particular people in the village. And so really this is, a, this is a film about that moment. Who's sending poisonous pen letters? Who in this community is sending them to who? Why are they sending them? Um, but right the from the very beginning, the accusation right from the beginning of the film is the woman next door played by the utterly brilliant, the whole family here, are huge fans of hers, Jessie Buckley. Jessie Buckley, exactly. So right from the beginning, she's yes. cast, isn't she? Yeah, and she's devil. a loud-mouthed Irish. There's some, there's some wonderfully crisp lines in this throughout. But you know, she's she's loud. She drinks. She fights. She head, she flashes her ass. She's my kind of girl. Um, she just has a great old ribald time. Um, but she's also she's a, a single parent. Or... She's also a widow, mm. and um, she has a boyfriend who is a gorgeous young black man, which in those days, in Little Hampton, in a little village, to be living and drinking and shagging. I'm not entirely outrageous. sure. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure that he nor the copper would have been Asian or black. I think that's representation and diversity in casting from the original story. I don't right. think her husband was actually black. In ah, real life. Oh, okay. I think uh, that's my sense. But again, a, a little bit like the David Copperfield film. Because nothing is made of the color of his color. Is not there? at all. There's no, and yes. I think that's important. And I think so, that's good. Right. Okay. So it's just a case of diverse casting mm. without. I think uh, that's something we could talk about in our that's popcorn quite junkies. Interesting mm. though, because. For me, through the film, that was one of the sticking points of unbelievability for me. Interesting. But yeah. if you think the similar thing kicked in with David Copperfield. No, but there was a lot of that made in the PR and the run up. And because it was, it, mm. it was a completely diverse cast, mm. it was. Whereas in this, I felt it was saying from the true story that right. he was also a black man, which was like, oh right. my God. No wonder there was the racism at that time, and she, there would have been so much hate. Mm. So it informed my. It informed so it added my, a new layer to it for you. Well, an yes, but, layer. but but it's an inaccurate right. one. <laughs> okay. Well, and also, I mean, you know, you got the prejudice against the female police officer played by Anjana yeah. and Vassan. It, 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 it's a pro it, it is problematic. It is problematic as a viewer because you come to these things thinking, well, we know what racism there's been, so there will have been even more racism yes. then. So yes, I think. But if we think about it. There is nothing racist said to her. It's no, only the fact that she's a woman. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, in fact, Jessie Buckley, I, I, I presume your colleagues and friends are doing this on Loose Women. She's the ultimate loose woman. She I mean, isn't she? She Cracking. is. So what's nice about this film is the, it's, a, it's, a, it's a period drama. It's a costume, costume drama, period piece. Um, it's comedic, but it's also, what's clever about it is baked into it are some really quite serious issues, I think, quite serious concerns. So, of course, the main recipient of these letters is Olivia Coleman's character, Edith. Oh, um, God, Olivia. Who, who lives in this un, un, un hellish environment with her mum and her dad, played by Timothy Spall. Yeah, well, hellish, because in the beginning, it's just the classic, you know, repressed, suppressed, mm. religious household. And um, Timothy Spall is utterly brilliant playing this domineering father now i think first of all what i would say about this film is it's one of its weaknesses but maybe it's going to be its strength for a lot of the audience mm. is that it is a bit british postcard style 
right from that music at the very beginning when Olivia Coleman takes the bathtub, picks it, did it, did it, did it, like the music was telling us how to feel about this film. It was setting us up for how the, you know, the tone of the film. For our international watchers, of which we have many, what, how would you characterise what that postcard, you're talking about those kind of, the caricature cartoon postcards. I mean, this was helped very by the fact that the British. woman at the cinema gave us a stick of rock each as well. Yeah, very, very British, see, jaunty. Jaunty, jaunty yeah, is what yeah, yeah. the music was saucy. jaunty, saucy, comedic, mm. and so I was like, oh, okay, I didn't like that at the beginning. I no, thought, I didn't. oh, I don't really want to be, I don't want to be saucy seaside. Yeah, I want this to be gritty and yes, with some just naturally woven in wit. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I, I had didn't exactly want the same response. And I was like, oh god. Well, for the first thirty minutes or so, I was really struggling actually with it because I thought, oh my god, is it all going to be? This seasoned? is panto. This is this is this is sort of panto. And some of those issues didn't go away, but other stronger things did kind of yeah. kick through. And we were with both our daughters and I immediately thought, oh God, because yes. they're very into their indie films. I thought they're not yeah. going to like this. Yeah, that's what I thought. Because it's seaside jaunt and we're all having a jolly time. And like Mark, and that, that stayed with me through the film a bit. But because of the absolutely sterling performances from every <coughs> single person in it. All of them. Every single person, and mm. there's lots of like cameo roles. I mean, there's Eileen Atkins. Eileen Atkins in is there. in there. Dame Eileen um, Atkins. Was just so brilliant that I was able to just sit above the jauntiness. Well, I would go so far as to say, and I think Timothy Spall grounded us in such dark. Well, Timothy Spall gave us a sort of granular, oh sinewy. Vicious. I mean, Timothy Spall is one of the nicest, gentlest, loveliest men you could ever hope to meet. So this, he must have had real relish sinking his ticket. He was just expletive and Oh, but I can't remember what it is horrible. in the Dickens film that I yes. saw him in where he was absolutely brilliant. Was he? He was he? Was it? And he didn't overstep the mark. So mm. this is this. And what what began to what begins to unravel in this film is someone sending these letters. What happens because of these letters being sent is there's a framing. So, you know, uh, Olivia Coleman's father wants to frame Jesse Buckley next door. He doesn't like his daughter making friends. friends. And you can see from the very beginning of this film, which I thought, I thought both actresses played beautifully, was a mutual, res not just respect, but a mutual, they were allured by each other, weren't They're they? They're great, great friends in real yeah. life. And they say they are in love. Yeah, you know, so they that. fell in love when they first met each other in friendship in love. Mm. And so that was played just so beautifully where the moments could come in where they could have that. They did that just fantastically. I mean, if you think um, a lot of that was done, I mean, there's this, I was, whenever I watch films these days, I'm breaking down into sh shot schedules, how many shoot days of the. There's many, many sequences where you've got Olivia Coleman in various moments in the film at the window. A lot of this is, a, it's literally curtain twitching, it's poisonous letters. It's a film about trolling. Well, village life, where everybody life. knows everybody. And, yeah, yeah. And, it's a, and it is a film about trolling, it's about and, nosiness. And, the, and, and that envy. judgment from the village. And, and because Olivia lives in such a judgmental, you know... Controlled. You know, religious zealot household where yeah. she is totally controlled by her by her father, you can just, you, I, I, it, it made me feel so trapped. Yes. And then you have this woman next door who is the difficult woman. Mm. Jessie Buckley is the difficult woman because why? She doesn't take any shit. She's having loads of fun. She brings up her child she just exactly sex. how she wants to. She brings up, she, she, she has sex and um, that causes a lot of upset in the village. So all the way through, it's like, who is sending these mm. letters. Mm. Jesse's been been accused, but who isn't? Because it could be all manner of people that are jealous of her freedom. Jealous of her freedom. And and of course, this is going to be a spoiler review. Her though, wild abandon, that's what you have to describe her character. Absolutely. And it's that wonderful thing of her being a challenge and a threat to common decency. Yeah. It's all that kind of stuff. And, and common and, decency, <clears throat> that terminology yes. is still used to women all the time all the now time. why is it worse yeah. for a woman to swear yeah because there's so much swearing in this so and it's the, the question that the <clears> theme <throat> throughout the film is you know and we're shown the the you know the 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 um contradiction in that with men <coughs> who will who will judge a woman who swears but then behave in the most disgusting demeaning <coughs> to women way no i'm really pleased you said that i, I, I wouldn't have thought to have commented on that but you're right there were really strong scenes, weren't there, where you had the police officers 
chittering away in the most disgusting oh, fashion. Yeah, just really gave her one. She loved it, up for it. Absolutely. And then you had her father, who's more than happy to pull upon a swear word when he sees fit to be expletive and all the rest of it. What I liked about it were, what, what my favourite parts of this film were, were the much more subtle aspects of all of it. And so, for example, at the point that Olivia Coleman, who keeps receiving these letters from who? Well, we presume Jesse Buckley. But it begs the question, as Jesse Buckley herself says later in the film, why would I send these letters when I'm more than happy just to say it just to say anyone's it face? face? I mean, she heads, headbutts a guy at one point. Um, but what I liked about this was Olivia Coleman's character, who's receiving these letters from who? Jesse Buckley, uh, we assume, or, uh, becomes a, a minor celebrity. And so it speaks to this notoriety, and suddenly she starts to gain... You see the ego and you see the fame start to touch the sides of Olivia Coleman. Well, because she's had such a repressed and... I thought, I thought the playing that was beautiful. She... I mean, there aren't really words to describe I thought she Olivia was, Coleman's no, talent. Really I mean, she will take you through ten different emotions, mm. won't she? There's like somebody that, you know, certain lines that are said mm. and she'll give you naughty and dangerous mm. and terrified and... It's and she feels every single one of them. You know, she inhabits her characters so completely. Yeah. And what I love about that is Olivia Coleman. So she had the most wonderful childhood. She's had no trauma. She's That's had funny. nothing. Yeah. So so it she's speaks to those people that you can only act. You know what? You have to have method. You have to pull on trauma. You have to do. Mm. No, you don't. Some people can just act. Absolutely. And she is one. Of them. And I think I think if, if for anyone who for the younger members of the family, if you're thinking of going to see this as a family, I think the cell. I would sell to younger viewers it would be that actually this is a parable this is a sort of period piece in which you can see the parallels and the echoes of modern day trolling modern day trolling. fame total trolling but also modern day fame so you know Olivia Coleman gains this kind of attention and she rather likes it and suddenly she has she has status which her father Tim Spall is not happy about and is forever wanting to clip her wings there was and there were particular scenes of extraordinarily powerful control and sadness certainly brutality. between and brutality between uh, just two words between Olivia Coleman and, and him and you you pointed out that wonderful moment where the mother the woman who plays Olivia Coleman's mother just the the silence that she greeted her husband with when he was and the brutality of men hard. that think women are becoming difficult you know where your place is difficult yeah don't become difficult you know where your place is mm. um so I enjoyed it. You enjoyed it. My reservations. I yeah. My major reservation was. And well, I, that's only because it's not my genre that I, I'm not, I don't choose seaside postcard sort of. Well, I feel genres. I feel it needed to be something more than just the seaside postcards, and I think Olivia Coleman took it to places where it was much more than um, seaside postcards. Um, there were moments in there with Joanna Scanlon as the kind of you know farting, flatulent kind of woman in the. I, what I liked with the kind of su supporting female cast was they they all had a sort of grudging, you know, a sort of a sort of what's the word? They they didn't want to overly show their desire for freedom. They all wanted it to be yeah, just to be free. Yeah, but they had a strong sense of what was right. Yes, and, yes. And through that, we, you know, we're shown when women pull together, changes can be made. Yes. And when women pull together and say enough is enough, it's very powerful. But, and it's a big but, Jesse Buckley, big fan, I felt she stayed at one place from the get-go and I didn't feel her arc at all. I felt Olivia Coleman's not only arc, I felt her arc up, arc down, arc up, arc down. I felt Jesse stayed at one note and I would have liked to have seen a little bit more subtlety around around her character, but also I thought her relationship with her daughter was verging on sort of cliched and a bit obvious and a bit I and I wanted to smash not I wanted to smash the guitar up too and, and that annoyed me and it was a bit twee and it was a bit it was a bit sort of saccharine. Whereas I thought Olivia Coleman just kept taking it, and I, this again is Olivia Coleman's greatest strength. She gives you, whether she knows, you know, she just gives you so many layers to every scene that you're in. And so you, you also have the whodunit aspect, which I thought was actually dealt with quite funnily. I was laughing out loud with mm. some of the kind of, you know, like telescope that, stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's a light-hearted film with quite a serious note beneath yeah. it, which is, and I think this is the important theme of the film. And it's an interesting theme, retrolls, is that what we discover, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Are yeah, gonna spoil I'm gonna spoil it. This spoil, now, if you read the story, you'll know the story, so spoiler alert. When you realize that Olivia Coleman's been sending them to herself and then sending them to everyone else, uh, you, you kind of also realize, oh my God, this 
sort of bloodletting and this kind of poison writing and this poisonous sort of sense of frustration and wanting to sort of insult or hurt people or what have you, um, speaks to her being marginalised and having an appalling set of circumstances herself, where she had no freedom I of expression. I knew right from the beginning it was her. Yes, I did, I, but I didn't want to ruin it for the kids, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, but I mean, I think that it does make you stop and think, I oh. need to be in the centre of things. And, yes. and you know, it's, it, it, it fascinates me because I always think that all trolls need are sympathy. Yes. Because I think nobody is, nobody that is happy is a troll. I think people that are unhappy with their lives troll other people. Yeah. And so I always think it's, it's or no matter what they say to you, it's not about you, it's about them and what's going on for them. Totally agree. Just on the Jesse Buckley. Totally agree, because just quickly on that note, you never felt any of the letters were actually that personal to anyone. It was like the opportunity to just mm. be expletive. Scourge. Well, we see when she's being punished by her father and she just yes. turns into trolling. But actually, it's about her father. It's not about the person that she's writing the letter to. It's about exactly. she cannot say anything to her father, fucking bastard. And then she goes from writing out... Um, 200 parts of the Bible. By Bible. She's been given, yeah, 200 lines, the verse. And she's probably on about 150. And we see her writing again, a agonising hand, and it just goes into hate. See, I thought that was the richest part Loved of this film for me. I thought, I thought all of this... I mean, again... But on the Jesse Buckley, what you were just saying there, and you didn't feel the arc, and you didn't... I actually think Jesse Buckley's part was really <clears throat> underwritten... I agree. ...with the daughter. I think she did what she could... I, yeah, I think ...with you're the right. daughter. I think and I right. think that... In the, I think her character was one that had always hidden. I feel, spoiler alert, that the daughter came from a rape. Right. That's what I feel. I think she came from a, she oh, come okay. from Ireland mm. where she said it wasn't good for my daughter to be. And so she had come from a life where she just covered up everything with bravado. And, and I think she gave us that really clearly because she could also, you know, the sadness and the darkness and the fear that she gave us just a few times was about her character always hiding it. When mm. two women, for very different circumstances, had learned how to mask who they were mm. because of the control mm. of other people. It was the priest who told me how to write and did my letters, and I thought that she had, there was something with the priest. So she was covering up. This and to be this brave, fearless woman that nobody could mm. touch, and there was just only like so. I think actually it was a really good performance because she just gave us little windows mm. into when she was scared and when she was broken and crying mm. when her boyfriend left her. Mm. You know, she was totally broken, destitute. Yeah, I think I think that's a good point that you make, but I mean, I think in a weird way, you're right. I, I, I part of me wondered whether what happens with this film, I think there's a much, much darker subtext to it but what i think they were clearly interested in the filmmakers was making a breezier comedic film that that licks at the edges or flicks at the edges of more serious subjects but of course depending on what your tastes are whenever we got to that more serious stuff, so like the moments where Olivia, there was a, for me a really important moment in the film is when they're standing opposite each other in the street the crucial moment towards the end and the words that come out of their mouths mean nothing but it is just a guttural scream to be heard and to connect uh, with this other woman who she actually has a huge admiration for, who she would like to live like, who she'd yeah. like to have the freedom of. And, jealous. And, you know, uh, jealous of her world abandon. Yeah, and interestingly, from a feminist perspective, this is son of radical feminist. Interesting, again, the film makes a good point of reminding us that both, all the women in the film are given the gift of writing by a father or a priest and it's through the writing and it's around the writing that the whole film pivots i think that's interesting too um i have to say one other thing final thing that just as we sum up i, I, I kind of i think a part of me was kind of i don't know if they're all based on the real letters or whether they had some kind of artistic license to kind of go off on one but i i was expecting it to get ruder i wanted i wanted it to get ruder well you got stinky pissing cunt and you got i mean what else are you gonna get well I didn't yeah have pegging in those days True, dinner pegging. Yeah, no, you're right. Okay, I suppose they, they hit all of those. But um, but yeah, I think I yeah, enjoyed I'm gonna it. I'm going to say a strange thing, because there's so much swearing. We don't actually, we're not at all worried about swearing in, in front of our kids or anything. But if you're not, and if you're not, I do <coughs> think it is quite a good film 
for the whole family. I don't know whether young boys, but certainly young girls, like you, you know, mm. our daughters liked it enough. Yeah. I mean, if um, you're a cinephile, this, this is classic British cinema. Classic. For me, there was virtually nothing cinematic about it. There were no, there was mm. nothing about the camera Very work or the structure town. of it or the music or anything like that, that, that added to our exploration. There was no clever use of the filmic language to do anything other than, as you rightly say, set in a beautiful location, um, it was very chocolate real, box. very believable. Chocolate yeah, yeah, box. absolutely. Cho chocolate bo box England. But a nice, I think its richest aspect for me is it's an interesting re reworking of the idea of what, what makes a troll. I, I think that's kind of curious. Um, so I know Nadia isn't in the business of giving scores, but I will. I'll give it about 56 out of 100. But I know that there'll be an awful lot of people. So many people are going to love this. Yes. Film. So oh, yeah, many no, absolutely. people. It is cosy. It is... It's it's like those good old sort of BBC dramas. It's isn't televisual. It? And and they're just they are some of our greatest performers in it. So yeah. There you go. I would say go and see it.